In this part, we're going to talk about the post-concussion syndrome. Uh, this is one of the sequelae for head injuries uh, or traumatic brain injuries. So it's the, it represents a group of symptoms which include headaches, dizziness, seizures. Uh, the patient may develop amnesia and loss of memory. Uh, also, sometimes uh, the patient will complain of increased sensitivities to external stimuli, such as light and sound. So the, the patient would um, feel so sensitive even to dim light uh, due to uh, increase de decrease the threshold of uh, sensation in the brain centers. There will be uh, also manifestation of mood changes or disturbances in sleep patterns. This could uh, disappear between, um, this might disappear between few days until few weeks and the patient will uh, recover or might it extend to for life and the patient will suffer for this for, uh, for the rest of his life. Uh, another sequelae of uh, traumatic brain injury would be the, developing, the development of uh, brain compression. And this could happen with or without lucid interval. Without lucid interval, this would happen um, mainly after severe intracranial hemorrhage or depression of the one of the cranial bones leading to increased intracranial pressure and brain compression uh, directly without regaining the conscience in between. However, some people develop uh, what is known as lucid interval. And you have to know that lucid interval is a stage of consciousness. So the patient is aware and is uh, awake after his traumatic brain injury. And co this could be as short as 30 minutes or as long as weeks. Uh, this happens mainly due to trauma to the middle, middle meningeal artery or any of its branches or um, an intracranial hematoma that develops gradually over uh, several days to weeks from the injuries. So the, uh, the compression is happening um, gradually uh, or slowly progressive. How is this important to do the medical, uh, the medical legal field? First of all, this is one of the um, main areas that uh, medical neg negligence could be um, could happen. So if the patient it didn't receive the care and not absorb it for 48 hours after brain injury, uh, the physician would assume that the patient has regained conscious and he's uh, uh, he's well and we let him go home after 48 hours, then the patient goes into severe compression that is uh, might lead to death. And this was con considered as medical legal negligence um, or medical negligence. The other uh, situation, sometimes the patient, after gaining his uh, um, conscious and he started to um, do his normal life activities, the assailant defense may claim that the patient was alive after the head injury of, by, the, by the assailant and uh, the death was not caused by this injury. Uh, another option would be that the victim uh, would regain conscious and would have memory and will remember the incident and will, call, will tell the name of the assailant to the authorities and this would uh, help solve some of the crimes. Um, Another uh, sequelae is a diffuse axonal uh, injury. And as I mentioned, this has happened in, uh, due to, um, mainly due to road traffic accident where there is an acceleration deceleration injury or it could be rotational injury. So the small neurons is torn, are torn um, due to the shearing force, shearing or tearing force. It's like يتمزعوا من بعض يعني. Uh, of the long brain connecting nerve fibers, which is known as the axons, or they might rotate to or twist, and then uh, uh, avulsion will happen. Uh, it, this would be macroscopically, and it is not really observed by normal imaging technique or the usual imaging technique. However, with high um, field uh, MRI, sometimes they are shown as multiple focal uh, white matter lesions that is around one to 15 millimeter in diameter. And uh, most probably the patient will uh, develop into the persistent vegetative state or deep coma leading to death. Uh, some of the, now we are talking, we're gonna talk about cerebral compression. Cerebral compression basically means increase of the intracranial pressure uh, due to increased 
uh, level of um, due to in, uh, space occupying lesion or increased uh, fluids inside the brain due to hemorrhage or uh, cerebrospinal fluid development. So any stage of increased intracranial pressure is known, could be known as cerebral compression. For traumatic uh, uh, reasons or traumatic causes, this happened immediately after the trauma, as in case of depressed bone um, segment or a huge hematoma happening uh, right away after injury, or it might develop over a latent period from hours to days due to the gradual increase of the intracranial pressure as I explained earlier uh, in this video. So the stages of compression is started by irritation. Well, there is a compression of the cerebral veins. This will lead to congestion and edema that will end into irritation of some of the uh, cerebral centers. This is followed by the paralytic stage when there is more increase in the intracranial pressure and compression of the cerebral arteries leading to ischemia and brain infarction and this will lead to some paralytic paralysis of the uh, higher centers in the brain. If the pressure is uh, markedly increased and it is not resolved, then the brain will herniate from the skull through the foramen magnum, and mainly it's gonna uh, happen in a, in a shape of cone. So this is why it is called coning or tonsillar herniation. This will lead to compression of the brain stem, which has the vital centers, and then herniation of the medulla, and this due to uh, asphyxia and syncope. The clinical presentation of increased intracranial pressure is uh, very variable. Uh, some of, you will have usually history of trauma if the, if the cause of the uh, compression is related to traumatic injuries. Uh, sometimes the patient will develop dizziness or arthritis, uh, level of consciousness, which will um, will have, which will be measured with uh, Galascocom scale, as, as you will know, um, as you will know later on in your career, um, or if you study neurosurgery. So disturbed consciousness and instability, disorientation. So it is measured by Galascocom scale, and it's sometimes uh, with brain compression. Usually, the patient will have a very low score. Um, if the patient is uh, not um, fully unconscious, sometimes they will complain of headache. Uh, you will see the projectile vomiting and blurred vision. This is a very common signs to increase intracranial pressure. There will be cerebral fever due to a disturbance of the heat regulation system, especially in the stage of irritation. A Cushion triad, which is a, a condition which is uh, characterized by um, three manifestations. So there is a bradycardia, slow, full irregular pulse, there is hypertension, and there is bradypnea or slow breathing. So usually when there is um, increased sympathetic uh, reflex in the body, there is the three, uh, there is tachycardia, hypertension, and uh, bradypnea, uh, uh, sorry, and uh, tachypnea. With this uh, triad, it's different. There is a slow pulse, so it's bradycardia, hypertension and uh, slow irregular breathing this due to disturbance of the vital signs of uh, vital centers in the brain uh, also one of the most important signs for um, brain compression is the signs of lateralizations which is uh, uh, the the pupils will react differently to um, a stage uh, to, to light stimuli uh, for example, uh, the, at the beginning, the pupil will show epsilateral constriction, then it will develop into epsilateral dilatation. Epsilateral means uh, the same side at the site of the brain injury. Then contralateral constriction followed by contralateral dilatation to finally develop into dilated fixed pupils. Also, the signs of lateralization include the hypertonia and hyperreflexia, which is going to be um, due to affection of the corticospinal tracts that decastate in the medulla. Treatment, sometimes it is only conservative and sometimes you need a decompression operation, which is also known, that, uh, about, uh, known as trefine operation to remove the cause of the compression, especially trefine operation in cases of uh, depressed skull fracture, for example. 
um, and uh, after that the patient will have a permanent infirmity because the bone uh, the bone defect will only heal by the formation of a membranous uh, tissue so the bone will not form completely as a skull this why the patient will suffer from permanent infirmity and will have symptoms that will last for all his life if he live and he didn't die if we want to, uh, to differentiate between uh, see the differential diagnosis between compression and concussion so in concussion there is a disturbed brain function in compression the cause of the lesion or the cause of the pathology is the increased intracranial pressure concussion usually happen in sudden situations so immediately after the trauma however compression needs time to develop unless it is very severe and obvious the vital signs uh, temperature usually in the concussion is subnormal uh, in compression the patient may suffer from fever due to uh, compression fever and rotation of the heat regulator uh, regulation center in the brain the pulse usually uh, rapid weak and blood pressure is low and the respiration is ra rapid and shallow in the concussion however uh, in compression there is cushion trinet slow full pulse high blood pressure and slow irregular breathing uh, with the concussion you will not um, find any symptoms of increased cranial pressure such as uh, vomiting blurred vision and headache signs of, later of lateralization develop with concussion it will not develop with uh, sorry it will develop with compression it will not develop with concussion and the treatment usually with concussion is observative however sometimes we need to do decompression surgeries and decompression measures and treatment to treat the compression long-term complications of head injuries uh, just know these syndromes for names um, i don't expect that you know everything uh, about this just post-traumatic epilepsy this could happen due to uh, fibrosis or gliosis of this um, uh, brain tissue uh, after uh, the injury could have uh, infection in the form of meningitis or brain abscess permanent disability of course if the brain center is damaged it's, the recovery is not likely to happen so this could lead to permanent disability sometimes affection of the cranial nerve lead to um, cranial nerve palsies cognitive disabilities sensory problems if the sensory cortex is affected uh, uh, damage of uh, the um, mood and um, of the basal ganglia, ganglia lead to uh, personality changes sometimes speech and language disorders if the broca's area is affected dementia alzheimer and parkinson's disease may develop later on as a long-term complication of traumatic head injuries so you need to know these only for name by names with this we come to the end of our lecture and uh, the end of this video thank you so much for listening and uh, looking forward for any questions